Today, we will continue reading of uh, Saints of Raja. So our next story is Girija Devi. Uh, and I, again, I apologize for the last week because uh, we were late home, so we couldn't make it in time to, to read it. So we will continue this time. Uh, I sent you also PDF if somebody wants to follow on PDF or just relax and listen. And please, uh, if you feel at any moment to say something, unmute yourself and please share with us. Four, three, three. Devi. The gopis of Raja did not have to do any sadhana for the attainment of Krishna Prem. Krishna Prem was inherent and self-manifest, or Nitya Siddha, in them. They love him even when they had neither seen him nor heard anything about him. Rupa Goswami explains this in Ujvala Nilamani by refer referring to what Radha once said to Lalita about her state of mind when she had not seen or heard anything about Krishna. She said to her, Dear Saki, I do not know what has happened to me. My heart needlessly pines for the company of a youth who is beautiful beyond description, whose color is black like the color of clouds, who wears a garment of bright yellow lightning, who is the repository of all good qualities and who is so loving and lovable. I have neither seen nor heard about such a person. I have never even imagined the possibility of the existence of a person like him. Still, I do not know why I love him and shed tears for him. It is not possible for a jiva of this world to have the Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem of the Nitya Siddha Gopi. We can perhaps say that Girija Devi had at least a semblance of it. She was blessed with all the best things of this world, making her weep. Oh, sorry. Uh, that uh, all the, sorry. Uh, she was blessed with all the best things of this world that one can desire. She was the beloved wife of Sri Nitru Yunjaya Prasad Singh a rich landlord of Jamira in district Ara of Bihar. She had two handsome sons and two daughters who were suitably married. She also had a number of servants to serve her all the time. She was called the queen of Jamira. But she knew that these things were transitory and the bond of love that tied her to her kith and kin was not pure and altogether free from selfishness. Therefore, she always pined for someone 
who was eternally true and eternally her own, whose love was pure and who loved her and wanted to be loved by her. She did, that, did not know who that person was, but she always remembered him and shed tears for him. Suddenly, her older son died when he was 18 years old. Shortly after, her younger son also died. <clears throat> the death of both of her sons in one year made her turn her back completely against the world and live in a world of her own. She remained oblivious even of her bodily needs. She bathed when her servants made her bathe, ate when they made her eat, and did whatever they made her do. But their activities went on mechanically without her knowledge. Her husband was greatly worried. He requested his family guru to do something to restore her normal condition. The guru started reading Srimad Bhagavatam to her. On hearing Bhagavata, she came to realize that the person who had so far been residing in her heart unnoticed and making her weep was Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna also could no more remain unnoticed. He appeared before her. On account of excess of bliss on seeing him, to which her frail body and mind were not accustomed, she became unconscious. On regaining consciousness, she began to look all around for Krishna. Not finding him anywhere, she again became unconscious. It became difficult for her to live without Krishna. She asked her husband to send her to Vrindavana, where she now decided to live for the rest of her life and do Krishna Bhajan. Her husband was in a dilemma. He could not send her to Vrindavana to live there alone, because that would have been against the tradition and honor of the family. How could a lady of a very respectable Thakur family who lived strictly in Purda be allowed to go to Vrindavana to live there alone without Purdaha? I, I don't know what is this Purdaha, so have, I think, here. How could she be allowed to go and live in Vrindavana in a rented house in austerity? Probably this Purdaha means like richness and uh, opulence. So now she is going to Vrindavana to live in austerity without uh, all this 
uh, abundance. How could she be allowed to go and live in Vrindavana in a rented house in austerity when all her life she had lived in a palace in luxury? At the same time, how could she be restrained from going to Vrindavana? Keeping her away from Krishna and Vrindavana would mean her death. He had ultimately agreed to send her to Vrindavana with one or two maidservants. She went to Vrindavana and began to live in a rented house behind the temple of Radharaman. The house belonged to Sri Milamani Goswami, one of the servants of Radharaman. Since she had now come so close to Radharaman, Radharaman got an opportunity to play hide and seek with her. He sometimes appeared before her directly. Sometimes through a dream and disappeared. Sometimes he possessed some person and spoke to her through him. Girija Devi had accepted Sri Hari Goswami, another servant of Radha Raman as her Tirtha Guru. Many times, he was suddenly possessed by Radha Raman, and in that state, he went to Girija Devi, talked with her, gave her certain instructions, and came back. When this possessed, he did not know why he had gone to Girija Devi and what instructions he had given her. Sometimes, while talking with her in the state of possession, he would suddenly become dispossessed. He was then surprised and embarrassed to find himself sitting near her. Girija Devi knew that in that state it was Radharaman who spoke to her through him and she followed the instructions he gave. But Girija Devi did not like Radharaman's talking with her through another person instead of appearing directly before her. She pretended to be angry with him. She used to chant his name through Mahamantra. She decided to chant the name of Radha instead of his name. <laughs> the day she took that decision, Radha Raman possessed Nilamani Goswami and spoke to her through him. Nilamani Goswami lived in a house close to her. He was at that time ill and was lying on bed. Possess possessed suddenly by Radha Raman, he began to shout in a state of delirium, Call Girija Devi, Girija Bibi. Call Girija Bibi. His wife went and brought Girija Devi. As soon as she came, uh, Goswamiji held her hand and said, 
Will you forsake me? Tell me. Girija Devi began to look at him, <clears throat> and she, she, didn't, she did not understand what he meant. He said again, Will you now chant only the name of Radha, not my name? Will you certainly forsake me? Kirija Devi then understood who was speaking through Goswami. Tears streamed out of her eyes and she said, No, no, how can I forsake you? And Im immediately Goswamiji became dispossessed. He said to Girija Devi, How are you here? You called me, said Girija Devi. No, I didn't. What else could Girija Devi say? She made obeisance to him and left. Girijaji always concealed her bhakti bhav. She could not be easily recognized as a great devotee. She smoked hookah. So she was smoking. <laughs> Tadas also used to come to her. When people saw her smoking hookah and chatting with the sadhus, they thought that she was the, a worldly-minded lady who only willed away her time in gossips with the sadhus. Though she, she did not talk with them about anything except Krishna. Ramakanta Goswami, another servant of Radha Raman and the present secretary of the managing committee of Radha Raman Temple, also had a similar opinion about her. But how can a devotee conceal himself if Krishna wants that he should be known and adored? Radharaman once performed a lila so that, Rama, so that uh, Ramakanji might know her well. The servant of Radharaman, Sir Radharaman, by turns. It was Ramakant, Ramakanji's turn off service when this lila took place. One day, he went to Mathura for some important work, entrusting the service of Radharaman to another servant. He returned late at midnight. He was surprised to see Girija Devi and a number of Goswamis waiting for his arrival at his door. As soon as he arrived, the Goswami said, There has been a serious lapse in the service of Radha Raman today. What lapse? asked Ramakanta with anxiety. The Karava, or the pot containing drinking water, was not placed by the side of his bed at the time of his going to sleep. It shouldn't be so. How, how did you come to know? inquired Ramakant. Radharaman himself went to Girija Bibi and complained about it. Oh, is that so, Bibiji? Bibi means sister, just that you know. Ramakant asked her. Yes, Maharaj, Shriji, Shriji came to me and said that he was thirsty. Ramakanji did not believe. How could Radharaman be so close to a lady who only smoked hookah and gossiped and gossiped? Yeah. That he would go and speak to her about her, his sorrows 
and sufferings. However, he bathed immediately and opened the temple. He was surprised to see that the karava or the pot is not there. Once Nilamani Goswami thought of asking Girija Devi to vac vacate his house so that he might let it out to some, someone else on higher rent. Radha Raman did not like it. He devised a lila, on account of which Nilamani Goswami was himself ousted from his house for some time with his family. <laughs> so Radha Raman kick him out <laughs> from his own house. One day, he locked his house and went somewhere with all the members of his family. On his return, he tried to unlock the house, but the lock did not open. He turned the key again and again for a long time, but in vain. His neighbors tried hard to open the lock but it did not open. No one could understand why the lock, which opened easily on other days, baffled all their attempts to open, open it that day. There, uh, there lived in the neighborhood a devoted lady from Rampu. She felt inspired by Radharani to say to Nilamani Goswami, Maharaj, you have committed some offense against Girija Devi on account of which the log does not open. If you request her to open the log, it will open. Nilama, Nilamani Ji thought that perhaps it was Radharaman who was speaking through her, because he had actually committed an offense against her in the morning by thinking of asking her to vacate the house, and that it was perhaps a punishment for the same that Radha Raman had kept him out of his house for so long. Apologizing in his mind to Radha Raman and Girija Devi for the offense committed against her, Nilamani Goswami went to Girija Devi and said, BBG, the lock of my house does not open. Everyone has tried and failed. I think it will open if you kindly try. Excuse me for requesting you kind uh, requesting you. Uh, sorry, excuse me for requesting you kindly to take this trouble. Giricha Devi, a uh, Giricha G or Giricha Devi laughed. She said. If none of you could open the lock, how can I? You may at least try, Goswamiji insisted. Girijaji went, and soon as she applied the key to the lock, it opened. She was surprised. She understood that it was also one of the Leela of Leela loving Radha Raman. Girija Devi sometimes enjoyed such close association with Radha Raman that some sign of his association remained in her body even when he was gone. Once he left in her sari 
a supernatural smell which lasted for several days. Wearing the same sari, she went to the temple for the darshan of Radharaman. Her presence in the temple filled it with a supernatural smell such as no one had experienced before. One of the, of the Goswamis said, BBG, even in your old age, you are so fond of scent or of perf perfume. Girijaji felt embarrassed, but there was nothing for her to say. She only blamed Radharaman and expressed her anger against him for trying to manifest her as much as she tried to conceal herself. Girija Devi's heart was now overfilled with Krishna Prem. Therefore, it always spilled in the form of tears of her eyes. Even when she sat talking with some people, tears flowed from her eyes in spite of all her efforts to control them. Sometimes she used to be so absorbed in this experience of Krishna Lila, which is so enacted before her mind's eye, that she lost all contact with the external world. Though her eyes and ears remained open, she could neither see nor hear. If someone wanted to draw her attention, he, ha he had to shout loudly, Rade, near her ear. Even then, sometimes, she, sometimes she heard sometimes not. When she heard, she responded by saying Rade in such a way that it appeared as she was speaking from some far off place. Sometimes, when she sat alone in her room with doors latched from inside, one could hear her talking with someone. Sometimes the jingling sound of noopers, noopers was heard of someone wearing noopers moving about in the room. Sometimes a sweet and superb smell came out of the room and filled the house. Once Girija Girija went to Sida Shri Goranga Das Babaji for his darshan at sa and satsang. In his ashram in Ramanreti in Vrindavana, he was at that time surrounded by a number of other devotees. When she went away, Goranga Das Babaji took the dust of the place where she was sitting and applied it to his forehead. The people said, Baba, what are you doing? He replied, I am doing what Uddhava and Brahma did and what Sri Krishna himself did. That lady is not ordinary. She is a gopi. Girija Devi had gone to Vrindavana with determination never to return. But after some time, her husband died and she was compelled to go to Jamira. 
she began to pray to Radha Raman to accept her in his service in the eternal Vrindavana, from where there was no return. At that time, a Mahatma came to Jamira, who said that he wanted to perform a grand, grand yagya, which would last for two months. Kiricha Devi took upon herself the entire responsibility of the yagya. The yagya was performed with great eclat. For two months, Jamira was charged with spiritual current of bhav bhakti, as it has never experienced before. Immediately after the conclusion of the yagya, Giricha Devi left her physical body to meet her Radharaman in celestial Vrindavan. Wow. What a story. So beautiful. How did you feel? Can somebody share? Oh, there were no translations. Other languages, now I see. Hmm. Uh, just Japanese ones. Would somebody like to share something? Hmm. It is uh, so beautiful. I mean, when we see the relationships of devotees with their Ishtadev, we can feel the emotion. It can also bring tears to our eyes. And what also came to my mind when I was reading how we can never know 100% who are other devotees around us because devotees expertly hide their bhav and that we should, we should always respect other devotees even if from the outside it looks like they are doing something which is not a uh, Vaishnava way, I would say. So, like in that example, when he wanted to evict from the house uh, Giri Jadevi, and then Radha Raman said, Sorry, <laughs> if you want to. Put her out, you need to go out. Yeah? <laughs> you cannot go back in your house. Of course, Radhika and Krishna, they both make Leelas for fun, definitely. They like to have fun. But also to teach us teach something and in the same time to show their devotees because he thought that she is an ordinary person and who is just smoking and maybe gossiping and like that but then he understood that she is not just an ordinary person but in, in deep connection 
with her Ishtadev, her Radharaman. You want to share? I don't know who is here. Everybody is without camera, so I have no idea who is listening. Somebody is listening. <laughs> Linda, I try to listen, but sorry. My mind was so much disturbed by particular events here. Uh -huh. <laughs> but what is why I couldn't share. Sorry. <laughs> okay, no problem. I tried, but really my mind was so much disturbed. Ah, did I go to the? Ah, stream, my dear. Gajadevi, past time, beautiful. Yes. Very nice, beautiful. You are right, without Ishtadev, fixing devotion not to start, my dear. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful, wonderful. You see how she is fixed with Ishtadev. Externally, she is smoking and everything, but the heart is there. Yes. This is a bhav bhakti. Mm. Very nice, beautiful. I was listening, but they closed my camera. <laughs> I now go to Arthi to listen to this story. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. This this also actually reminds me when you are giving harinam and uh, you are not asking anything from people because uh, if they will be all time focused oh I need to be careful for this be careful for that it will be so difficult for them to relax and enter into uh, the feeling. Yeah, feeling is the goal of life. You know, yeah. Feeling is the goal of our life. Our bhakti. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Kaju badam. Kismis. Kaju bhi hai badam bhi. Bada hua. Rajeshwari. Radhe, Radhe, my dear Dina Dayal, I am listening, but honestly not one-pointed, but I hear it and I find it so nice that you have to PDF also, I can go deeper in the afternoon. This is nice together, but hearing are here together and then reading also this. I have not a book now, I need also the book, The Saints of Raj. Yeah, yeah, that's why I, so I share Wonderful. each story. Yeah. yeah, that's why I share each story that people can maybe follow easier through the it's text. All recording, no? It's all uh, recording also. Yes, yes, it is recorded. You can see in the uh, beauty of real love, all recordings are there. Yeah, this is so wonderful. Just now I uh, shared with friends in my group in uh, Telegram with another friends from another traditions, this, this beauty of real love, this is a wonderful uh, ocean of <laughs> of bachan and lectures and it's so nice. I'm so and lucky that I... Who is sharing, they have all recorded there. He is doing a great job. Yes. And you have a background so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I took from the book. <laughs> wow, so nice. 
So great job you are doing. All Kripa. All mercy. Yes. Where is Mahabhava? Mahabhava, she uh, she is on the ad in the on the other uh, camera. You need to unmute Mahabhava. I'm here. Very nice. Very nice. Very happy. Good Shakti, you're giving. Wow. <laughs> Very nice sharing is happening. Yes. Thank you. You have to also take something to share. You have to also do. Mahabhava. Yeah. One time you have to fix to share something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone.